This is a tutorial for my advisees, others are welcome to listen to it, on advising. And we're going to begin with the typical advising form that comes in duplicate. And I like to always add at the top here information about your registration appointment. where I will put in handwritten form typically the date and time. This is important because if you register early, uh, as soon as your registration appointment comes up, you have a better chance of getting your classes. Your name, of course, goes here, your CLID, the bulletin in effect, and whether or not you're an un upper division or junior division student. This has to do with whether you're in your first two years of college work, or if you're farther advanced than that, your major would be coding, uh, speech language pathology, and audiology. The cumulative grade point average that you've achieved would, would be placed here, current phone number, also the hours you're working each week. This should be kept to a minimum in order to be able to put in the study time that's required. You're expected to study two hours for every hour you spend in class so that if you're taking 15 hours, you sign up for 15 hours of credit during a semester, that would be a 45 hour work week. If you added another 30 hours, that'd be a 75 hour work week, which is excessive. I like to look at three semesters at a time or three sessions at a time. This could be a fall semester followed by a spring, followed by a summer session, or a spring semester followed by a summer session, followed by a fall semester. You sign it at the bottom to indicate that you've been advised, and then hopefully you go and register at the earliest possible registration time. So how do you find out what this registration appointment is? We're going to open the U-Link program. and you would be clicking on the student tab for your registration appointment you click here and then going to registration then you're going to say you're registering for regular classes you submit the query you indicate the academic level undergraduate select the term you want to register for and then you would go ahead and submit and continue with your registration Next is a question of what classes you should register for, what I call the Curriculum Rhythm page. The form we're looking at is for the Department of Communicative Disorders College of Liberal Arts from the 2013-2015 catalog, and this is basically the entire curriculum for the four-year program. This is the first semester, second semester, third semester, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. You should finish in four years if you stay on this rhythm. You would be able to uh, stay on course if you did 12 hours, 12 hours, and then 6 hours in the summer before starting the fall here. Admissions for the program are done in the spring semester for the following fall, so you should be starting in a fall semester. In the first semester you're going to do one CODI course, none in the second semester except unless you count STAT 214, which is a requirement for the CODI program. And then you pick up your next two CODI courses here in the fall semester of your second year, my course 219, the CODI 275, Normal Speech and Language Development, the Introduction to Linguistics, which is a foundational course that you need for these courses in the following spring. Now here's uh, a rhythm issue that is really major. You need the 219 course in order to get 221. This 221 course is only available in the spring. Then you have to have the 221 as a prerequisite to be able to take this course, the 382 course, in the following fall. Following the 382 course, you need to take 386, which is only offered in the spring. And then in the following fall, you take the Cody 419, the neurophysiology course, which is only offered in the fall. If you stay on this rhythm, you can easily complete the program in eight semesters. Next, I've pulled up here what I call 
the Cody audit sheet. This is the sheet that lists all the courses as you take them. For instance, let's say that you took English 101 in the fall of 2013 and you got an A. We'll list the grade here and then indicate fall 13 as the semester in which you completed that coursework. In the left hand column we're talking about the general requirements for the college and sometimes ASHA type requirements, for instance these psych psychology courses. And in the central column on that first page, here we're looking at the major courses. You also have to identify a minor. Typically I'm recommending that you consider psychology as a minor because it's a good cognate and because you've already got two psychology courses in the list which count towards the 18 hour minor leaving you 12 hours to complete that minor. You can do a similar uh, maneuver with English with the 200 and 351 English courses here and so you would only have 12 hours to complete an English minor or you can do it with history where you have two courses required in history and those could be courses that are counted towards a minor in history and again you have only 12 hours to complete a history minor. If you investigate you discover that child and family studies, another popular minor choice, requires uh, considerably more work because of the prerequisites. It's basically adding another semester to your course of study. A couple of other points to note are the number of required hours. We need 120 hours all together and we would determine that by adding up all the hours in this column and all the hours in this column that you have completed then adding those two values together and showing that we've completed at least 120 hours and we've met all of the course requirements in both columns. In addition to that we must look at this 45 hour requirement which has to do with the number of courses that you must take at the three or four hundred level. These would be advanced courses or at least they're counted as advanced courses. Uh, the English course happens actually to be an introductory linguistics course but it still counts towards that 45 hour number. With the 45 hour requirement in view it's a good idea to think about putting a 400 level course here. For the Cody elective I usually recommend Cody 441. If we go to the ULINK page, which I'm on here, and to the course and section schedule real time, then I'm under subject, scroll down to communicative disorders, and put in course 441. We'll select the spring term and say find sections now we discover the course that I'm telling you about which is Cody 441 Fluency and Voice. Backing up just to cross check we discover that if we said fall of 214 we find nothing offered during that semester and this is usually a way to check to see whether or not a course is offered during fall or spring or both semesters. It's an excellent course taught by Dr. Tetnowski on stuttering and it provides another 400 level course in this list for Cody courses of which you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight threes is 24 hours so you've completed 24 of the 45 hours required. You could pick up an additional 12 hours in the psychology minor for instance and that gives you uh, 36 hours towards this 45 that's required plus three six possibly another three hours here if you use English 360 or 365 course or 310 which is the 
speech course from communication plus the 313 from psychology and you could also have a 300 level course here in the arts. So with the 36 hours we've already accounted for, 39 hours, Let's say this was a 300, that's 42 hours, 45 hours. If we add the 351 from English and possibly could be 300 level courses as well, at least one of them could, then you have 48 hours or possibly more. It's acceptable to just barely complete the 45 hours, but it's good to plan ahead and it hurts nothing if you exceed that. Next, looking back just a bit, I want to point out that you can always move up to a higher catalog, to a more recent one, but you can't go back to an earlier catalog. Looking back to our standard audit sheet again, uh, some students will be coming in with credit they've achieved at some other university, such as, for instance, Louisiana Community College. If you have hours completed at a community college, it could be SLCC. Some students will also have credits they've earned from LSU Shreveport, for example. In those cases, this number could be listed. Let's say you took the 313 psych course or the equivalent at Shreveport, then we would put a number here to indicate that that was a transfer course and we would also list your grade. Let's say you earned an A in the fall of 2011. And let's say you did Psych 110 at SLCC. We put a 1 here and the grade achieved at SLCC in say the uh, spring of 10. Sometimes students get a little alarmed that they are Transfer credits don't show up immediately on their transcript after they transfer from, say, SLCC to UL. This is not a problem to worry about because they're not going to compute the transfer credits over in the dean's office until they know you're not going to drop out. Next, I want to pull up this one I'm calling specifics on courses. It needs to be examined in combination with the audit sheet. I'm going to take a look at a few of these specific requirements. For instance, in chemistry or physics, it turns out that you can't do physics 160 or 170. One is astronomy of the solar system, the other is astronomy beyond the solar system. Neither of those will count under the sciences. We're talking about the science requirement here of either chemistry or physics. You can, however, do physics 213 which is a course for non-majors, or you can do Chemistry 101 or Chemistry 102. The Chem 123 course for nursing majors is allowed for that chemistry requirement. Looking back to the communication courses, in view of the 45-hour requirement, it's a good idea to consider choosing a course that has a 300 number and returning to this list, we discover several 300 level courses that would be acceptable. 310 is a course in public speaking for non-majors. Uh, 309 is interview theory and technique, uh, also suitable for non-majors. Um, English 365, technical writing is certainly recommended. And English 360, advanced writing is also acceptable. 359, writing in the social sciences, writing in the humanities. 358, 359 are also good English courses. In addition to those courses, considering the need for three and 400 level courses, you have an option in the arts as well. The courses that will qualify include Fundamentals of Music. You could do 323, 324, a class in piano for non-majors. 360 on Cajun and Zydeco music, Creole and black music in Louisiana, 362, music appreciation, music of the world, 364 is also suitable. Looking back to our audit sheet, we discover there's another area where we can pick up a couple of 300 level courses in history. To demonstrate this, I'm going to go to the old-fashioned hard copy catalog, which we can find by going to the University of Louisiana, then pick Academics, and then scroll down to Catalogs, then look under the Archives, and go to um, the Catalog for 2013-2015, under which in the Department of History we find 
this page, scrolling down, I'm going to skip over the 100 level history courses because although they're very popular, they don't add much to the curriculum for Cody students and there are some very good options at the 300 level. One of the courses that I like to recommend is the Black History course, which is a survey of the black experience from the African background to the present, with emphasis on the creativity and innovativeness of Afro-Americans in adjusting to and profoundly influencing American life. This course doesn't have a prerequisite, so we could use the 355 as our prerequisite and put a 307 here. Next, I want to open up a file that shows an example of a redacted program. I've taken the student's name out of the picture so you can't see, but I want to just scroll down and show you the uh, audit sheet that is presented prior to graduation. Here's a picture of the degree plan. We indicate the number of hours remaining to be completed here the number of hours already completed here at the time that this form's filled out during the semester prior to graduation. These are the total number of required hours in the major, total number of required hours in the minor, total number of applicable hours completed by this individual, 139, and the advanced hours at the three and 400 level. In this case, the student completed 51 hours had already completed 24 and had 27 remaining at the time the form was filled out. Then we also indicate that the courses we're enrolled in now, the courses we're going to be enrolled in in the coming semester and possibly a summer if that's also required. Then looking to the bottom of the audit sheet, we totaled the number of course credit hours in the first column, 62 hours, and then in this column we're going to exclude the courses we've already accounted for over here in psychology since we have a psych minor and then we're going to count all the hours that have accumulated in this column including for this individual some transfer credits all of those hours 77 in this column 62 in this column total together gives us 139 credits and we go back and also count the three at 400 level courses um, in this column and in this column without duplicating we're counting the 12 hours in psychology at the 300 level plus all the courses in Cody at the 300 level, the 351 English, the 417 statistics and any other 300 level courses, a 300 level course in music and the 313 psychology we're only going to count once and we get a total of 54 hours for this individual. That's pretty much how the setup prior to graduation goes. And the dean's secretary will lay a ruler across the page and will literally check line by line through this entire audit sheet against the transcript at the time of graduation. I'm going to open next the alumni graduation form, which you'll fill out prior to graduation invites you to check that you've actually done everything that you need to do in order to graduate. Then you fill out this form for applying for the degree. From this information, they're going to construct the diploma. You're going to provide a local mailing address, and also they're asking you for information about parents and guardians and their address so that in case you move, they'll be able to track you down. And that's about it for uh, the setup for graduation. Returning to my desktop, I want to point out that I've got an, an additional tutorial about what you need to provide to the people you're asking for letters of recommendation when you're going to graduate school or applying for a job. Well, you're welcome to point your friends and other people to this tutorial and also to the tutorial on advising if you think it might be helpful. Probably my least favorite thing is this document. What it tells you is all the ways you could mess up. You're required to sign a copy of this document. This is a pre-professional program designed to prepare you to attend graduate school, not designed to prepare you to do clinical practice or to be employed. The department wants you to get a master's degree and the master's degree program is very competitive. It requires the completion of 400 
hours, of which 325 hours have to be at the graduate level. They call these clock hours as if there were some other kind, but that's just the jargon of speech pathology. You also are advised not to seek to get the speech language pathology assistant degree or license. The department will not allow you to collect the hours required to qualify for that license. Then I'm supposed to point out to you that admissions are competitive, that the graduate record examination scores are very important, and even more important perhaps is your undergraduate grade point average. You are advised to apply to more than one graduate program because the chances of getting into the graduate program here at the University of Louisiana are uh, somewhat slim. Only about one in five candidates or one in six perhaps will be admitted depending on the semester of your application. I should also note that a GPA of 2.5 overall or 3.0 in the major is required in order for you to register for three or four hundred level courses. And this is currently being pretty strictly enforced by our department head, Dr. Nancy Roussel, who is the person who composed this letter.